Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Evan. Welcome to the Cartoon Block. Recently, I've been getting a lot of requests from guys out there who, you know, you guys want to know how to break into the comic book business. Well, earlier this year, I went to WonderCon and I forgot I recorded this video. It was a bunch of Marvel guys and editors and stuff talking about how to break into comics. I just want to pause for a second and emphasize that in this Marvel panel, these editors and writers from Marvel talk about what exactly to put in your portfolio, what to do in a portfolio review, how often to follow up with an editor, and how to get discovered. So get back in and check out the video. Can you get something to eat now? Yeah, let's get something to eat. Let's go. What? What is that? Dad, watch out! I recommend keeping your portfolio small. Uh, I, I see way too many pencilers that come to me with like a 50 page portfolio. And, and here is the, 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 the ugly but realistic truth about portfolio review. By page two, we know whether you are talented enough to start working now, talented enough to keep an eye on you moving forward, or not ready yet. In some cases, maybe not ready ever, but we never like to say that, you know, you just, you just never know, right? Uh, so I always recommend a shorter portfolio. My, my original portfolio, and, and I've done this formula before, has, was, a, was a 12 page portfolio. And in a 12 page portfolio, I communicated my storytelling skills, uh, and it was a pencil portfolio, my storytelling skills and my cover skills. And my storytelling skills uh, with respect to, well, all right, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll try to, I'll try to keep it short because this can get really, really involved. Um, my, when I was working at Valiant, coloring, I would see pencilers come in who were working at Valiant, it was sort of a smaller company, but were trying to break into Marvel or DC, or had broken into Marvel DC, and I would always pick their brains, because I'm really big on role modeling. So, uh, so I would hear all these horror stories about, yeah, you know, I showed my portfolio at DC, and it was Spider-Man pages, and they said, hey, this is great stuff, we love it, but can you draw DC characters? Which was always mind-blowing to me, right? We could draw, you could draw. But that was the way it was sort of, it, it, it sort of was working in comic books at the time, and, and it, was, it was the same way at Marvel. Well, I love your Superman pages, but can you draw the X-Men? Well, gee, I drew a great Superman. Couldn't you imagine me drawing a great Wolverine? No, I guess not. Um, and, and, and then I would always hear people say, yeah, you know, my, my stuff was really superhero-oriented, uh, and when I brought it to people, you know, to, to some people at DC, and they were looking for a horror artist, they said, well, you do superheroes, well, I'm looking for a horror guy, or I'm looking for somebody to drag, draw quiet moments. So I decided to do three separate stories, each one of them three pages. They were, they were basically just pantomimes. They were, they were silent stories in which, uh, in which you could the, the editor should be able to follow what was happening in that story without word balloons. Because that's another that's another big problem, right? If you I see people try to letter their books, and if you're not a good letterer, bad lettering can destroy a really really good looking comic book. And if you don't want if you want to know. A perfect example of that, just go look at the original Miracle Man, Marvel Man stuff by Alan Moore, right? So there was some really dreadful lettering in those books and it really took away from beautiful art. Um, so I didn't want to letter, I didn't want to ink, because again, I wasn't a great inker and, and I've seen a lot of good penciling portfolios get destroyed by someone's horrible inks. Uh, so see, we could also tell you that it's always good to separate the two, show your pencils and then show your inks separately. Uh, so I did, I did three stories. The first story I did was a single character, because I'm sorry, that was another thing, right? Artists would say, yeah, you know, I showed my Superman pages to DC, and they said, yeah, this is great, but the editor was a Justice League editor, can you draw teams? Err. So, uh, I, I did a three-page Superman story to demonstrate my handling of a single character, an DC character, and then did a three-page X-Men story to show my handling of Marvel characters, and a team story, and then my next three pages were just two guys recounting the story of a lost love at a bar. So it was a very, very quiet, non superhero moment. My final three pages were the cover for each one of those stories if it were to be a full comic book. And that was it. And that was the portfolio that got me hired at, at, at DC that one day. I never had to show it to anybody else. I showed it to Jim Osley and that portfolio went to bed. It was never shown again. Uh, so keep it short. Uh, and then there are other aspects to it, you know, which is when you present your portfolio and see you can tell, you know, all the stories about, you know, be pleasant, be persistent, not pushy, all those sorts of things. But, but really, just, just, and, and always show your most current work, you know, because a lot of people come in and they show stuff that's older and you get the back portfolio, like, oh, I like these pages better. Oh, yeah, do those today. 
Why didn't you put those in the front? Because you want to make your first impression strongest. That's the beauty of also keeping it short. If you keep it short, then the next convention, like between, if, if you showed your portfolio here today, between today and San Diego, if, if CB had some words of encouragement for you and, and do's and don'ts in your portfolio, between now and San Diego, if you decided to really go to San Diego and, and do it again, you can put together any 12 pages. And by the way, that also shows that you have a determination, the ability to deliver on time, all those things, you know what I mean? So keep it short. And you want, one of the other things I'd recommend too is what Seth, Joe says, if you're a pencil and you're going to a portfolio review or a writer, I'm sorry, a pencil, ink, or a colorist, it's always good if you bring a pad and take notes. You know, you know, show the editor that you're listening and you're there to learn, that you want to learn. And a lot of times I've found out if someone sits down and pulls out a notepad and starts writing, I'm going to give them a little more time. I'm going to give them a little more critical review because I know they're listening and I know they're writing down what I say and they're going to take that home and they're going to learn from it. They're not just going to forget what I said. And um, one last thing, for the, just another thing about the pitfalls of portfolio reviews. If you go online and you Google S-A-S-E, send another submissions editor, it's a short comic I did with Rob Guillory of Chew about some of the worst portfolio reviews and it's advice for what not to do as you're an artist to going to, to portfolio reviews. So yeah, just S-A-S-E with Rob, and search Rob Guillory. I'll, I'll check it out, thank you. Cool. Because <laughs> even though once you break into comics, the second part, part is staying in comics. It's like you have to reapply for your job after every arc, every six issues, you know, every, every miniseries. How many people here are interested in being a writer? Yeah. All right, wow, a lot of you. And how about you interested in being a penciler? Not as many, so more writers in the room. Anyone for inking, coloring, or lettering, some of the other disciplines? All right. And how about editorial or corporate, legal? Oh, all right. <laughs> all right, cool. So, um, those are all writers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that there's a, a lot of uh, things you should remember in comics beginning with the letter P. And it's, it's be polite, be professional, be persistent, don't be pestering, and don't be a pain in the ass. So, um, yeah, like, like I said, it took Will and Port. That's the only part of the story Joe woke up for. <laughs>
just say, okay, fine, I appreciate that, that's fine. Stay with people in your lives that believe in you and believe in what it is that you're going to do, and you will make it along the way. And I'm not trying to be all Pollyannish and silver scout guy or any of that stuff. I really do believe that at the end of the day. Previously on Cartoon Block. Yeah, let's get something to eat. Let's go. What? What is that? Dad, watch out! Hey y'all, so Cartoon Block is alive and kicking. Sabrina, my daughter, she's alive as well. Hey guys, what's up? So, uh, we shot that 100% on my iPhone and it's a cool effect, a cool new app rather called Action Movie Effects. So you guys can get it for free, download it in the iTunes store. And uh, hope you guys like that, you know, visual effects, little something, something we doing here on the Cartoon Block. Anyway, I hope you guys learned a lot from those editors and writers on that Marvel panel and take them up on their advice. Those are tips to help you all get in the manga comic book business. In other news, Cartoon Block finally got a P.O. box. And so you guys can send me stuff. Next year in 2012, I will start uh, a new segment here on Cartoon Block of opening up, you know, letters from you guys, all my supporters and whatnot out there. And y'all send me whatever you want to send me. Letters, your drawings, um, arts, crafts, whatever it is. And I'll go ahead and open and read you guys' letters here on the Cartoon Block. So till next time, 